This is 15 Porter Street, where back in 1993, the real people had their first recording studio. We invited Liam and Noel down to record some demos, which ended up being the Oasis live demonstration tape. Okay, folks, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're actually here today to talk about, um, about this Fostex 8-track machine and the SEC desk. Uh, and this was the equipment that we recorded Oasis' very first demos on in about 1993, which uh, you can see the cassette here. We found um, some Reel to Reel, which has got a very, very early version of Columbia on, which has me singing the verses and a version of Rock and Roll Star, we think is the very, very first recording of Rock and Roll Star, which is uh, an unbelievable thing to have. Okay, here we go. Okay, individual tracks on this one. We've just been recorded live in, in a room with about two or three mics. Okay, and the guitars, on the three and three four. And four. Completely live, not on this side, but on that side. Bass on five. The this is just, Liam's vocal. In the sunshine. Gotta slow it right down. And if you just hear how, how young he sounds on this, it's unbelievable. And this is where everything came, this is rock and roll star. It's the first version of rock and roll star. We were touring with the Inspiral Carpets around 92 and Noel was the Rosie. We started getting on very well with um, Noel and their on stage sound man, Mark Coyle. Noel got talking saying he was in a band with his brother and we went to a gig and checked them out. We thought there was definitely something there with them. Uh, yeah. And we went to see them at a rehearsal and we yeah. caught to the idea of them coming up to Liverpool and us helping them produce some demos. This is the live demonstration tape that subsequently got them got them a record deal. <laughs> no, no, it's, I'd say it just sounds really young and yeah, it's really yeah. just a one take thing. It's very, very special what we've caught on tape here. Because Liam had never worked with headphones before, you know, because he'd basically never been in a recording studio before. So what he, um, the first time that, uh, that he, he tried to sing with, with a set of headphones on, he just wasn't used to it. The reason why uh, Chris ended up singing, singing on Columbia, well, also because you know, he, he I was help, have, help him write the song he, as well. He, he, was, he, he did have parts you know, of, of the words and stuff like that, and, and the melody and stuff. You know, I, I was there at the time and witnessed all of this. Um, and what basically Chris used to do is he used to put the headphones on and he, he would sing on track one and then get uh, Liam to sing along with him. And that's kind of, uh, even though Liam had his own style, you, you know, he, he was on Liam, some of, basically. On some of the songs, yeah. that's how he got some of the phrasing. And then what we do eventually is take my vocal out and Liam's vocal up in. We were all into the Beatles, listen to the Beatles all the time. Well, we used to listen to Slade a lot as well. There was a mutual, mutual respect yeah. of, of us playing. We'd just sit down for for hours and hours on end playing. We yeah. played them Slade, Captain yeah. Beefheart, they'd be playing us more of the Buzzcocks and more of Manchester sort of thing. Yeah. And we used to be sitting around for hours and hours just saying, have you heard this, have you heard that? But we did try and help them on the structure of the songs and stuff like that. Further down the line, I think they learned a lot what we were on about. We spoke to Tony McCarroll a few times and he said, yeah, they definitely took took either what you said a few years later. Well, it's well documented that when they finished their gig in uh, King Tut's Wild Wild Hut, when uh, Alan McGee seen them, he, Noel gave him one of these tapes and he went home and listened to it and he, he was phoning him up at five o'clock in the morning saying, this is the best thing he's heard in years and years and um, they're gonna be just be massive. It went from, you know, from from this A-Track machine recorded through, 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 through this desk, uh, to eventually to this, to this, so that, and then open and up Nebworth, Nebworth with, with Columbia. With Columbia, at that time, um, I was absolutely gutted because we were really good friends when we were recording all of this. And it comes to when he starts getting the records, he's gonna get them more bigger and bigger and bigger. Next minute, they're doing like the biggest gig that's ever been. I think it was at the time. 
Uh, I couldn't get on the guest list. So okay, what we're going to do now is play the original tape that we found of Columbia. And one and two, is we've the got drums. the drums. Okay. Which these were probably recorded with about three mics in the room and bounced down to two tracks. Okay. Three or four, we've got the guitars, the which, stereo. Is, which is Noel and Bonehead playing at the same time, it's all live. Um, these have either been bounced down to two tracks or there's just been two mics set up in the room and it's recorded live. Okay. Uh, so five, five, we have a bass. And then on and seven is my vocal because Liam hadn't sang it yet. So these are like the... So it's like the, the, guys. Added, yeah, the, the guide vocal that yeah. I've been singing. There we were, and here we are, all this confusion. On eight, we have Liam and Noel doing the choruses. Feel because the way I feel Me, Tony, Liam and Noel doing ad libs at the end. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. Uh, and that now, okay, and now here's with everything in. Okay. Now we are, we are. This is confusion. Am I confusing you? There we are. Now we are, we are. This is peculiar. Am I confusing you? Ding, 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 ding